Now, our next theme is on the impacts of climate change on, on various animal and plant species. So we had lots of questions about polar bears and koalas, deer, and lots of things that you were concerned about. Well, lots of wonderful questions there. And to get us going, we're going to hear two questions from Lacey and Poppy. How much of the Earth's surface will become uninhabitable if nothing changes? My question is, if climate change was to continue to happen, what would happen to the environment and biodiversity? Well, thanks, Lacey and Poppy. And I think we'll start with Lacey's question, which was um, it's quite, um, quite a worrying question, actually, that must bother many of us, which is if climate change continues and we don't do anything about it, is it possible that the, the whole earth will become uninhabitable? Um, I'll ask that question to Lindsay. Well, thanks, Brian. So I've brought along a little prop to help us think about what might happen to all the animals and plants on the earth as it starts to get warmer. And this is my prop and it's an orange, right? And this orange is gonna represent our earth. And this line that I've drawn around the middle is what we call the equator. And that's where it's generally hottest. So we get the most sun on the equator. And as we move away towards the poles, either the North Pole, which is the top of my orange, or down towards the South Pole, which is the bottom of my orange, and it generally gets colder. Now, what would happen if I start to warm the whole thing up? Now, well, what you can imagine is that a big thing that animals and plants can do as the orange gets warmer is they can move. So things will move away from the equator generally as it got hotter. They'd be able to move north or they'd be able to move south. Now you might think, well, that's all very straightforward then, but what will happen to some of the animals who are already living right at the top? And there's not really anywhere for them to go. So things living at the poles are at most danger of being squeezed off the planet entirely. So for them, the planet may become uninhabitable because there just isn't anywhere left for them to go. So in fact, the warming that we see is much greater at the poles than it is around the equator. So that's one complication. And another problem for animals and plants is they can't always move. And that's partly because we have put barriers in the way. So animals trying to move north, for example, might run into roads or they might run into cities. So that's why it's quite difficult for us to know exactly what's going to happen to all the different plants and animals. Now, on average, people reckon, scientists reckon, that of all the species that are currently threatened on Earth, and we do have lists of them, that about one in five of those species, the threats to it are caused by climate change. So it is a big, it's going to have a big impact on lots of different plants and animals. Thanks, Lindsay. So, so Emily, it seems that um, we're not talking, as, as Lacey suggested, about perhaps everything being wiped off the surface of the Earth, or the, the Earth turning into a planet like Venus with no life at all. But as Poppy said, uh, what we're talking about here is the impact on that, that big word but that everybody hears about, which is biodiversity. That's right, Brian. And, and there are a lot of different ways in which biodiversity, the, the animals and plants, nature is impacted by climate change. Lindsay's mentioned how we're seeing species moving closer towards the poles so that they stay um, in, the, in the temperatures that, they, that they're used to. We're also seeing in the same way um, animals moving further up mountains so they stay in those cooler um, temperatures. Another change that we're seeing is um, impacts on hibernating animals. So animals that want to sleep over the winter in the cooler temperatures, if the temperatures aren't reaching low enough, then uh, they don't know that they're supposed to be going to sleep. So some of the animals that we are used to see, are used to hibernating, dormice, for example, um, are starting to suffer as well. So there are many different impacts on, on nature of climate change. But the other concern is about people. And we're already seeing the impacts on people, for example, in terms of extreme heat waves and particularly elderly people, uh, extreme heat waves can really cause problems for their health. And in some instances, um, people have been dying as a consequence of the extreme heat. And Lindsay, you mentioned a number which was about a fifth of all species have been impacted by climate change. Does that mean 
that we might lose a fifth of all species on the planet due to climate change? Well, I think we, first of all, we have to recognise it's just that they're under threat from climate change. It's not inevitable that they're going to go extinct. These things should be sending a strong warning to us all that we really need to act. Another thing I brought along to show everybody is this. Now, this is a piece of coral. You can see it's bright white. And coral is one of the species that's very, very sensitive to changes in water temperature. So there are some quite dire predictions about coral reefs. And that's also one of the things that I find quite shocking. So when I was a child, I remember reading about the Great Barrier Reef of Australia. And people used to say it was one of the natural things that you could see from space, which seemed incredibly impressive. And just in the last 10 years, the Great Barrier Reef has started to have what's called coral bleaching. And that's when coral gets too warm and the water gets too warm. This is just the skeleton of the coral left that's white. And if the coral animal dies, you're just left with these white skeletons. And great areas of the Great Barrier Reef have started to turn into just these white bleach skeletons. And I think that's the kind of alarm bell that should really make us all sit up and say, not in our lifetimes. We're not going to let this happen. We can change our impact on the planet and make sure that children growing up can still see corals in the future. And we had a lot of questions um, about not only the, as you said, the barrier reef of Australia or the polar regions, and we think about polar bears and coral, but a lot of people asked a question, which I think is a good question, which is, what can we do uh, closer to home? If you want to help the birds in your garden or the insects in your garden, what can we do now? Let your garden get a bit wilder. And um, so that's a big thing in the UK now. People are talking about rewilding, which is a really exciting thing. And that's about instead of fighting nature back all the time and cutting your lawn as short as possible and removing all the weeds, why not let it grow a bit longer or at least some of it? Why not let some of the weeds, which are actually they're just wild plants. Uh, and some of those wild plants are really important for bees, for example. So, so you can tell your mum your, your and dad are your grandparents don't make me go out and pull all the weeds up because weeds <laughs> weeds are plants. A absolutely. A weed is just a wild plant. A weed is not a proper scientific term. A weed is just a plant growing where you don't want it to grow. And if we just broaden our minds and, and, and think actually weeds are just wild plants that support bees and support other insects, let's let them grow in our gardens. Yes, that's the excuse to give your mum when she wants you to go gardening. So there you go, everybody. You can say, Dr. Turnbull said <laughs> I should not be weeding the garden. <laughs> um, Mark, I should. Uh, I, I I know you're not you're not in this section in my notes, but um... sure. I, I think both uh, Lindsay and Emily have done a great job of, of showing how what the impact of climate can, change can be in both the poles and the, and the the equator. And and for example, my family they come from the Caribbean, uh, which is more in the tropical region and a big concern for many of the islands in the Caribbean is the rising sea surface, the sea temperatures uh, and rising sea levels, I should say, um, which can impact both uh, the actual, because many of them are islands, so that could also impact the habitable land as well as the local um, tropical wildlife, which is very rich uh, in biodiversity. So I think it's, it's a global issue um, which, which can affect different parts of the world in different ways, from the poles to the equator and um, pretty much most places in between.